David Lynch's Lost Highway is a film most famous for its surreal visuals, its disjointed scenes, and not exactly being forthcoming when it comes to meaning or interpretation. While it can be roughly said to be about a man who, having been arrested for the murder of his wife, inexplicably transformed into someone else entirely, that's about as far as the synopsis goes. So the immense volume of critical analysis and theory that has surrounded the film since its release doesn't come as much of a surprise. But what fascinated me when I first saw this film wasn't so much in the narrative or style, but simply the way it introduces us to the idea of filmed images a way that manages to be as mundane as it is sinister. When Fred and Renee start receiving anonymous tapes showing the outside and then the inside of their house, we are suddenly made aware of the invasive and powerful implications in the very act of watching. Lost Highway never gives any explanation for the tapes, or for anything, actually. Like I said before, that's kind of its thing. But its lack of coherence, while frustrating, reveals that what we are seeing is in fact not a fixed narrative at all, but instead a kind of visualisation of more emotional processes. And so the crucial understanding here is that the film isn't so much concerned with reality or the truth, as it is with perception and perspective. In what is arguably the most revealing dialogue about both the tapes and the film as a whole, Fred, when explaining his dislike of video cameras, admits, I like to remember things my own way how I remembered them, not necessarily the way they happened." This is commonly interpreted as evidence for the tapes being a symbol of reality, confronting Fred with the desires and insecurities he's suppressed. After all, this makes the most sense narratively. The tapes show Fred killing Renee, and while he has no memory of this, it does seem to be what happened. I mean, we saw it, right? But what if the relationship between the recorded image and reality isn't so straightforward? Connecting the tapes with reality, and subsequently the events of the film as mostly fabrication, might provide a much thought after answer to one of the film's many questions. But to criticise Fred for remembering things his own way, as this interpretation implies, would be to dismiss how our own perception and experience reflects in everything we remember, and how we're able to see the world. You know, how you remember things is not necessarily the way it actually happened, but it's the way you remember it. and. It's maybe even more valid than the actual thing, in some ways. But even so, what's the difficulty in conflating video and reality? Where a recurring phenomenon in Lost Highway is the act of being in two places at once, or perhaps in Fred and Pete's case, one place twice. But it is in this way that it reveals the hidden condition of filmed images. There's a great short story by Jorge Luis Borges on exactitude in science that was actually used by philosopher John Baldriard in his theory of simulacra and simulation to explain this very occurrence. It's a brief tale of a map so detailed that it becomes coextensive with its territory, completely covering and engulfing the city it was originally meant to describe, and it carries the uncanny suggestion of a model evolving to a state of being indistinguishable from its original. Or, to put it visually, Rene Magritte's painting The Treachery of Images shows us a picture of a pipe, and famously states, this is not a pipe, confronting the way we talk about images with acceptance, how we treat the image as the object when it is in fact not the object at all. This is not a pipe. This is an image of a pipe. Lost Highway deals with this doubling throughout the film. Rene and Alice are two characters played by one actor, Fred and Pete are either one character played by two actors or two characters who act as one person. Dick Laurent becomes Mr. Eddie, the mystery man talks to Fred in person and simultaneously over the phone, and in the end, it's revealed that the cryptic message Fred hears over the intercom was in fact spoken by Fred himself. No character is singular in the same way that no film image is ever singular. Like Borges' obsessive cartography, the film image may seem indistinguishable from reality, but it only creates a copy of what it films, a representation that can never quite replicate the original and so can never be considered entirely truthful. But if the tape isn't the truth, then what is it? Well, there's actually another set of anonymous tapes that might help answer this question. Michael Haneke's cachet starts with a surprisingly familiar premise. A wealthy couple receive anonymous tapes to their house that seem increasingly menacing. But these similarities aren't so important here, rather just what it reveals about cameras, films, and perception just from its opening scene. This at first appears to be an establishing shot, but it's drawn out far longer than we've come to expect from cinema. This is because the scene is not establishing a setting at all, but is actually establishing a point of view. This technical confusion between establishing shot and point of view shot sets up what is essentially a confusion of identity and perspective. We are posed with the question, whose point of view is this? Whose perspective are we seeing? But we're not given an answer. Instead of following the cinematic rules showing the looker after the object, there's no reverse shot as we're so used to seeing. 
the looker is never revealed, and so there's no answer, no payoff. But what there is, is a revelation about how we might read subjective images as objective. It's easy to assume the video is objective, that it must show events the way they happened. We believe that Fred killed Renee because we saw it on video, but when we've seen so many doubles, how can we be sure that this is Fred? How can we be sure of anything we've seen, even on tape? An assertion of individual experience begins to emerge through questioning the capacity of film as a medium of documentation, acknowledging the fabricated condition of its product, but recognising how, like Borges' extensive map of the Empire, this fabrication can come to supplant reality. When Fred declares, I want to remember things my way, he identifies a contemporary state of anguish surrounding identity, fearing that the multiple doubles created in images make it increasingly difficult to be sure of who we are as we're filtered through different perspectives. And your name. What the fuck is your name? This brings us back to what is ultimately being asked throughout the film. Whose perspective are we seeing? Is the opening act distorted by Fred's perception? Is what follows only his fantasy? Can anything, even the videotapes, be considered objective truth? In a way, as with the mystery videographer in Cachet, we spend the entire film waiting for this reveal, this reverse shot, but we never get a conclusive answer. But maybe this is because there was never one perspective to begin with. Instead, Lost Highway offers a negotiation of images and influences that invisibly shape identity. Who we are, who we want to be, or what we fear we might become. We like to think of the camera as something that reveals and that has an inherent objectivity. But despite John Lou Goddard's famous and temptingly quotable belief that film is truth 24 times a second, the very medium of film is built on deception. Fred's view of video cameras doesn't have to be an admission of denial, but can extend to a deeply held anxiety around the notion of identity. And it is this fear, rather than truth, that is reflected in the tapes. The footage in Lost Highway is shown as black and white, grainy, unclear, giving the impression of something that, like memory and like identity, is always incomplete, always changing. Everything is susceptible to manipulation. No matter how objective, impartial and truthful recorded images may appear, we are reminded of the impossibility of capturing a complete picture, and that there is always something else, someone else, behind the camera.